You're listening to Coffee with Innovate Finance, where we speak with experts from the industry on the changing face of financial services and the future of fintech and financial innovation. I am Rashi Pandey, Head of Membership and Growth at Innovate Finance, and I'm very pleased to be joined by Anton Padmasuri, who's the CEO and co-founder at Wealth OS, as well as Shamat Arambevela, who is also the CEO and co-founder at WealthOS. WealthOS is an API-first enterprise core wealth management platform built to accelerate digital adoption and innovation within the wealth management industry. So thank you so much for joining us today, Anton and Shamat, and for sharing your journey with us. Uh, thanks for having us, Rashi. Uh, thrilled, uh, thrilled to be on, on this, uh, yeah. on this uh, show. No, and I'll say yeah. thank you uh, for joining us from two different time zones at this point. So, so thank you. So, Anton, this first one's for you. Where did the idea originally come from for WealthOS? Um, so, Rashi, I've been in the uh, UK wealth management space for uh, approximately twenty years, uh, and I've moved through um, you know different uh, verticals from financial advisory firms asset managers, investment platforms, uh, pensions technology providers. Um, I come from a, a, a kind of a pensions expertise background, but uh, over the last 10 to 12 years, I've been a, a product manager in charge of kind of wealth and retirement roadmaps. Um, and actually the inspiration for Wealth OS came from my time predominantly um, at, uh, at a top five asset manager where I was in charge of their kind of the pensions and the retirement roadmap. And I joined them to kind of launch a, uh, a, a self-invested personal pension, a, a popular product uh, in the retail wealth space to save towards your retirement. Um, and it was supposed to be a digital product. And uh, as a product manager, obviously, I wanted to launch something kind of cutting edge. Obviously, this was the time when uh, a lot of uh, wealth-related startups are coming up. The likes of Betterment, Wealthfront, Nutmeg were kind of changing the way people were thinking about it. And uh, I really wanted to do something cutting edge. But uh, something that uh, kind of uh, I realized when, when kind of trying to build those products was how much the technology that was available uh, to large organizations was so unsuited to digital transformation for to building great customer experiences in the wealth space. So I was in charge of the, the, the roadmap uh, kind of for, for around um, kind of uh, almost seven years. And, um, you know, I was in charge during a time where regulatory change was highly active. I mean, we went through a number of changes, MIFID II, RDR, pension freedoms, you name it, which presented challenges as well as a lot of opportunity. But one thing that kind of kept repeating itself is, Every time we wanted to do something innovative, do something uh, kind of, uh, you know, uh, groundbreaking, technology became a problem. The core technology solutions that were available weren't uh, allowing us to experiment, be agile um, and build uh, products fast and get them to market. Um, so what I really wanted to do was I wanted to figure out surely there was a better way. And, you know, looking around the industry, I realized how organizations like Stripe, Shopify, Mambu were changing the game in, the, in enterprise technology, making it so easy to get great digital products out to market. And I really wanted to do something like that in wealth management. Therein started kind of my inspiration to build a kind of a modern um, core platform that was highly agile that enabled organizations to build cutting edge uh, wealth management propositions and compete with the, with the likes of the Robin Hoods and the Wealth Fronts and the Nutmegs that were coming up. So therein lies the inspiration. I was going to say the way you're explaining everything, I, I can almost see the passion that's coming out, uh, especially for digital transformation. This, that, that's absolutely amazing. But then coming on to, you know, moving on to when you started building it, what is, uh, you know, Wealth OS's, you know, vision and mission right now? And what problems, core problems are you trying to solve? I know you mentioned it a little, but if you had to, you know, summarize it in a sentence. Yeah, sure. I think the, the vision is to enable organizations to build uh, the next generation of savings, retirement and investments products extremely fast um, and significantly cheaper. 
So getting great digital products out to market faster because that's what will enable broader, broader access to great products and services to the mass clients. So wealth management shouldn't be the bastion of just the wealthy. Uh, I mean, we've seen how organizations have tried to democratize access to products that were previously only available to ultra rich. But I believe that providing the right infrastructure will enable large organizations to do that and reduce cost to serve. That's kind of the vision. Um, and in terms of um, uh, in terms of what key problems that we solve, in when you take the core infrastructure where most of wealth management is currently sitting, which is sometimes 30, 40 years old, there are four areas that we are solving. First is infrastructure. We are leveraging cloud native infrastructure to make the, the broader infrastructure of wealth management extremely agile. Instead of spending months and years and millions of dollars on just doing software upgrades, what we are building is a highly scalable, highly modularized um, uh, cloud native platform. The second is orchestration and connectivity. What that means is to build digital products and digital experiences fast, you want different functions and features to work hand in hand really fast. And what we want to do is take it away from organizations building and serving uh, customers and do it ourselves so that organizations can really focus on the customer experience and their value proposition. And then related to that, what we want to do is make the technology available via APIs. APIs are going to play a, a, a really starring role in future of finance and, and you know, future of everything, basically. And obviously, you know, we, have a, we have a deficit in that in the wealth management technology space. Wealth OS, on the other hand, makes all of our features accessible via REST and WebSocket APIs. And last but not least, we want to play nicely with emerging technology landscape in fintech from payments to kind of open banking to kind of KYC, AML, regulators. What our platform does is we build no-code capabilities that enables organizations to access these cutting-edge technologies without writing a single line of code. So all in all, we are reducing and lowering the barriers of kind of technology friction so that organizations can focus on building value propositions, building great customer experience, and then getting them out to clients. I love how you said that your clients will not have to write a single line of code. And the fact that you said API, yeah, I mean, and that's your in your tagline, right? That you guys are API right. first. Right. And this one's, you know, for both of you, since you guys are both, um, you know, co-founders, I'm sure there must have been challenges in starting a business, uh, as, as we all know. So what were the challenges you first faced when you started and how have they evolved? How are the challenges different now? Um. Yeah, so I guess no startup is going to not have challenges and barriers and hurdles thrown at it uh, every hour, almost it feels like. Uh, Anton and I have been solving problems and firefighting throughout. And I guess that's the, that is the beauty of it. We are building an enterprise B2B platform, which we truly kind of passionately believe is, will help change the landscape. Uh, and that's no... That's no easy, easy uh, venture to start off on. Um, I think the first barrier for us was, was COVID. Uh, to be fair, um, you know, we, we set ourselves up 2019 October in the UK. Um, everything looked rosy. Um, you know, did a, did a small funding round uh, with friends and family and started building a proof of concept. And then, then COVID hit. That meant build virtually, um, try to raise further money by showing the proof of concept to potential buyers, act, act, verify and validate our idea virtually. And then expand a minimum viable product build uh, fully virtually across multiple time zones, you know, across the UK, across Sri Lanka, across uh, Eastern Europe, where our testing partners were. And, um, and I think five years ago, maybe all of us would have thought that was impossible. Um, and, and I think the biggest learning uh, out of that for, for at least Anton and myself really is to uh, communicate as much as possible, be transparent as much as possible, um, make people part of part of uh, the process, make people feel owners, owners of the product, really. Um, and, and that then creates this sense of uh, bonding and camaraderie that you normally would have expected if everybody was in one place um, and, you know, and then kind of physically working. So uh, that for us right now, that, you know, we are still pretty, pretty hybrid. 
um, if not remote to a great extent. And uh, that's because we've, we've found something that really works for us um, and, and replicable, hopefully uh, uh, a model that will continue to replicate. Um, Anton, I guess you can you can pick up on some of the new challenges, maybe the ones that came up in the last few hours. <laughs> sure, I mean it's an interesting question. Shamat actually hit the nail on the head. It's a it's a daily challenge from the day we began, and those challenges seem to uh, evolve into different uh, you know different shapes and sizes. You know there are there are different challenges, personal challenges, um, self confidence. You know, huge amount of imposter syndrome. You've got to project a sense of confidence, but always questioning seriously are we really seriously doing this um you know we are trying to build core infrastructure technology for major financial institutions um and, and on a personal level you know we you know we 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 are we are not a couple of college grads uh we we we, we are in our mi- middle of our careers we committed to buying houses paying mortgages and looking after children so obviously there are there are major challenges major areas of uh, angst but what we've been really lucky with is is how how much people have responded so positively uh, both people who've known us since we were ch- children to those who uh, who we've got to know uh, along this journey and and that has really kind of uh, been a been an incredible uh, part of the experience is that you know yes it takes a lot of time a lot of uh, you know kind of sleepless nights whether it is you're raising capital, trying to get clients, kind of fr- trying to recruit, uh, trying to get your message across. There's a lot of kind of false starts, uh, but I think what's been so uh, kind of heartening is, is, the, is the support that we've had. Um, and, and right now, I think you know, what we've done is we've kind of proven to ourselves more than anyone else, the ability that exists if you coalesce a good team what's possible, a uh, high quality, highly talented team, what's possible. Um, and, you know, uh, the, the new challenges are making sure that we now take this amazing product that we built, built to market, uh, take our message to market, uh, talk to prospective customers, uh, get them implemented, make sure that it is running well, uh, that that the, the claims and the promises that we are making hold uh, hold up. Um, and then scaling this organization to the next level um, and in a, in a methodical and a, and a, and a diligent way. Uh, none of which I don't expect to slow down or may be easier. So we keep finding out that the, the challenge machine is, uh, has a never-ending uh, reel. Uh, but I think we are ready to take whatever, whatever comes our way. I was going to say, listen, I come from the startup world and, and you know, it's exactly what Shamat said earlier as well, that, you know, um, there are challenges that keep coming every hour sometimes, uh, you know, been there, we've all been there. Um, but but it's it's what keeps you for, going forward is your vision and the mission, right? At the end of the day. Right. Absolutely. So coming back to a little more of the technology side of things. So Anton, what is Portfolio Rebalance and do you do this with your platform? We do. I mean, uh, we are a, we are a, we have a we have a, a, a multiple set of modules. But uh, obviously, kind of talking about rebalancing in the in wealth management, um, you know, um, one major part of uh, wealth management is uh, providing good investment propositions, um, and that it entails investment professionals building um, portfolios that are suitable to clients. Uh, you know, along their risk requirements, their value requirements, um, and and investing money into these portfolios. But over time, what happens with the portfolio that that clients invest money towards is they tend to you know change in character. So it could be for different reasons. It could be markets have moved, and the shape of the client's account holdings have shifted away from the ideal portfolio. Or it could be because of some some constituent in the the highest utilization of cloud service provide uh, uh, services that a cloud provider can give you, right? So if I if I reel back even further, um, we are in an environment where most of the existing players um, are on premise. So think of um, buying your own, you know, rack space, um, renting your rack space, buying your servers. Um, backing in your hard disks and your databases and everything and configuring, um, you know, your primary site, then going and configuring your disaster recovery site, renting all of that, paying money upfront for the next five years, 
and then upgrading, uh, you know, every five years or something, which is some, uh, an environment we're all used to, very archaic now, even in the fintech world. But um, but like I said, wealth management is still a bit slow on uh, on the on the technology trends that maybe sister industries like co banking have uh, have you know heavily moved towards being cloud native. Um, then you have the step of kind of going into cloud uh, where you can just replicate the same thing on the cloud. So you don't, you know, you don't do it, but you you rent the same machines, you rent the same devices on the cloud. Not great. You're just kind of lifting and shifting, um, you know, and some of the problems that all, always exist would stay there. Um, you can, and that's using uh, cloud as an infrastructure as a service. Um, using cloud as a software as a service is then using additional, maybe additional, um, uh, software uh, that your provider gives you, but when you move into going into serverless, that that is using your cloud provider uh, as a platform. So you know we are on AWS, but but all three main providers, Azure and GCP, provide the platform as a service capabilities. And what that makes you do is you can use all of the the redundancy. Um, the, um, the the recovery processes that your cloud provider gives you and take that all for granted and write code on top of AWS almost as a platform. So we, when we do serverless, what that gives us is we write small pieces of code that are sleeping um, that will wake up only when needed. And that's what you pay for, that you pay for use only of a piece of, uh, a piece of compute, a piece of code, um, as and when needed, and that's what lets us scale, um, you know, significantly, uh, but also keep our operational costs down. So going serverless is the is the highest utilization of 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 what 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 cloud providers gives us today, and allows us to really really drive our infra costs down and and give give the, the highest level of benefit that we can. Through cloud uh, to to our to our clients and and I think that for us is what's really exciting for what we're doing and I don't I don't know of many other uh, many other um, uh, uh, many other competitors in the market who are who are on serverless technology and that's something we're really excited about. That is that is that is pretty cool actually. And, you know, we cannot not talk about partnerships as well. I mean, you've partnered with some amazing companies. So how important are partnerships to Wealth OS? I, I, I'll pick up, I'll pick up on, on, on the partnerships we have on the build side. I think, Anton, Anton you, can, you can pick up on partnerships um, on, on, on kind of the business side and, and how we kind of grow together. Um, we, uh, we started existing through partnerships, Rashi, uh, working with people um, who, you know, who not only built our platform with us, but tested our platform with us. And, and those, those partnerships, um, are incredibly important to us and will continue to be important to us as we grow and and building building strong relationships i think um and building trust right building trust with with with, with people who like i said uh you open up uh you know or the, the you know the your entire kind of gates up and say you know like come in you know join us in this process and and that's when it comes to building that's always been our ethos in in finding the right people and and trusting them uh, to to go with us in this process. So it's, it's super important. Um, and and we once we find the right partners, uh, you know, even even in the last few years, the partners we have found um, have proven to be massive backers of what we're doing, uh, even at the tough times. And that's when you know you 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 got the right people uh, working next to you. Anton, anything to add on the business side? Yeah, and and I think I mentioned this about uh, the the ecosystem. One of the things about the one of, one of the things about Wealth OS is that uh, we want to play nicely with the emerging uh, emer emerging fintech landscape, and that's what will make our clients win. Um, and to that end, I think you know if you take some of the integrations that we are making available on a no code basis with the likes of Stripe. True layer uh, on Fido and, and the likes. Uh, again, you know, members of Innovate Finance. What we believe is, if we work together, if we build an ecosystem that uh, ultimately is going to benefit the consumer through through our clients, I think that's going to be a, a win win for everyone. So that's a 
change if we think about how technology and software organizations may have thought in the past about highly insular. We believe that actually if we build great stuff in our own verticals, but we work together with a realization of how you know collectively we add value, I think that becomes a, a big part. So we, we want to consider ourselves a, a part of the overall fintech landscape uh, working together to change the change the way in which consumers win uh, rather than kind of looking looking inward what i what i can see as a theme that is coming up is people are very important to you whether it's 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 your employees your clients or or people just benefiting from your technology and that's very very heartwarming to see i just had to put that out there <laughs> And, you know, Shamad, I mean, of course, you know, we spoke about the fact that you guys are in different time zones right now. But apart from the UK and Sri Lanka, are there other areas you're trying to expand to and, and why? And can you perhaps also shed a light as to why is the UK such an important market for you? Sure. I'll, I'll talk about the expansion bit. Um, and so Anton and I are both, both Sri Lankan. Um, um, Anton's abandoned uh, quite some time ago, uh, <laughs> but uh, but um, I've I've kind of um, cut my teeth in Sri Lanka in and in 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 enterprise fintech product build in Sri Lanka as well. So I have uh, I I had a I have a strong sense of kind of the the type of talent that we have and uh, uh, how people can get passionate about about building. Uh, products, right? And you know, now there are certain countries, certain cultures that, and certain certain universities even that you know uh, turn out people who are uh, who are IT specialists, but who are better suited for maybe services agreements. So, you know, just do some things more, get out of it. You know, um, you know, do a contract for six months, get out of it. Right? You you have to build passion in. in you know, in 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 what you're doing, you need to earn the the right to have you know a full commitment. You know, to to what you're doing, and and uh, that you can do a lot with a few people then, right? And and I know Sri Lanka is not a big market, but the reason we started off in Sri Lanka, where there's a lot of familiarity, um, in in, in knowing the right sort of people we can tap into, um. Of building world class product out to Sri Lanka is is a, is a, is, a, is a narrative that that I know you know tugs at heartstrings right so so it's it was a great place for us to start and will continue to be a good place for us to grow organically um, and that's that is still now so and 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 both of us very heavy believers in organic organic growth and and you know hiring people for the right reason and hiring. I didn't answer your question. Outside of Sri Lanka and the UK, though, um, interestingly, I think um, it's not an area that we looked at right now. But we know that we'll have to uh, we'll have to uh, move out. Um, thought about maybe you know uh, Vietnam, potentially uh, Eastern Europe, uh, like Poland, for example, as as other dev shops that we can go to. We already have partnered with uh, test engineers in Eastern Europe, so I think you know th those relationships can grow into. Um, in, into um, you know engineering enhancements as well. Um, so we we will we we will grow Rashi. Um, I think uh, organically. I think is where I'd kind of go. Um, and there are a few bit, a few places in mind. Uh, but uh, I think maybe we are we are yet to trigger some of those. Uh, but I, Anton's Anton's best to talk about why we are focusing on the UK, uh, given that he's uh, he's been around there for a while. I didn't abandon, by the way. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm an immigrant too, guys. So yeah, yeah, all immigrants, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So in terms of the UK market, obviously, uh, the idea kind of, uh, you know, going back to my introduction, having spent 20 years in the, in the market here, I have a good understanding of the market, the gaps in the market, and so on and so forth. Uh, UK, despite its size, uh, punches above the weight in, when it comes to wealth management industry. Uh, it's a large market uh, and uh, it's got a great amount of opportunity. It is also a trendsetter when it comes to regulations. Obviously, Innovate Finance is, is fully you know, well aware. You know, London, you know, even amongst even within Europe, remains a fintech lead in terms of setting standards, setting trends. 
Uh, this is where kind of uh, open banking, open you know auto enrollment concepts like that emerged. So so my uh, my kind of uh, uh, why why UK specifically, I think it's a mature market in wealth management with great opportunity with a with a large target addressable market to go after. Uh, but uh, we are building a platform that is highly exportable, um, and we are we are absolutely you know convinced and keen. Uh, to take wealth OS across the globe. I mean, there, there is US, which is the largest market in the world. And then there is Asia Pacific that is growing at an incredible pace. There are places like South Africa and Australia, which have mature wealth management markets. So we will definitely focus on the UK because this is where uh, kind of our expertise and our domain knowledge lies. But we are convinced that the value that we are bringing to organizations is highly exportable and highly relevant across the globe. I love that vision. And, you know, I more power to you and the team. Uh, and, and we really hope that you, you, you know, you dominate globally. And, and I don't think that that's going to be very far off. So, you know, just, just a couple more things before I let you go. Um, we did touch a little bit on, you know, pensions and pensions technology. So touching on that, Anton, what are some harsh realities facing pensions tech today? And how does bridging this gap impact the brand and bottom line for SIPP providers? Yeah, it's a great question. This is personal to me because obviously, as I introed myself, I come from a pensions and SIP background and, and you know, the technologies that I had to work with uh, kind of... Uh, leave it to be desired to be honest with you and but and and also think about how how the population is um, kind of changing i think private pensions uh is going to especially in the uk is going to play a, play a big role in you know how people kind of plan for retirement and how, how they take retirement out one of the big gaps uh why that that those, those issues exist is technology because you know, pensions technology hasn't you know evolved. Uh, pensions technology has uh, stood still, and we go back to calling things like you know on-prem technology, lack of APIs, still the problem. So I think um, uh, you know, and and if you think about pensions dashboard as a as a concept coming up in the UK, uh, you know, I think that will enable clients, uh, individuals, to look at the pensions that they hold and, and, and a given individual could have up to 11 pensions. They could go through 11 jobs in their life and they might have disparate pensions. And all of a sudden you're coming to retirement and you need to consolidate them and figure out how to, you know, you know, construct a, um, you know, proposition that, that you can use to kind of draw and, and live on that. So there's a huge need right now to uh, upgrade the customer experience, upgrade the propositions, uh, but the technology hasn't kept up. Um, and I think that's a, that's a big area that we are focusing on. Uh, when and so we are currently, you know, we've launched our, our, our SIP technology, one of the first cloud native SIP technologies to be available, if not the only cloud native SIP technology to be available in the UK, fully API driven. Again, making it so simple and easy to build great, you know, pension and retirement propositions. And later this year, we are going to focus on building kind of highly automated, highly cloud native uh, decumulation, drawdown capability on our platform. Again, enabling to close that gap on being able to take money in a highly efficient um, and a customer friendly way. I can again see that passion coming across. Uh, but yeah, fingers crossed. Um, you, you did mention, I mean, we do go through a lot of jobs in life and we don't realize until towards the perhaps, you know, while we're you know, thinking about retirement that, oh my God, there, there's a lot of this money, but how do I access it? And and yeah, uh, so it's it's a very good problem to be solving. Yeah. And before I let you both go, what's next for WealthOS and any exciting news that you want to share with us, with the audience or any key takeaways that you want to <laughs> give to the audience? Well, listen, I think it's been, it's been exciting. I mean, last year uh, was the first year that we kind of really built a team and our in-house build kind of fills me and Shamat with pride every time we see it. We had a great Christmas party when I was down in Sri Lanka. So the team is, team is kind of number one for us, and uh, which is great. Uh, obviously, you know, 2022 was like the, 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 the year where we really started establishing our brand. So I think it's always nice when you go to an event and you introduce yourself. Uh, hey, I'm Anton. I'm from Wealth OS. 
Uh, and people are like, oh, I, I've, I know about you. I mean, they might not be able to pinpoint, but it's 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 a real uh, it's a real uh, nice thing when when people recognize your name. So so you know, establishing our brand, uh, you know, towards the kind of the Q Q three and Q four of last year, we also got selected to kind of a couple of accelerator cohorts, very uh, uh, kind of prominent ones, Tech Nations Libra program, also uh, Barclays's kind of Rice Growth Academy. Uh, and we are really proud to have been selected uh, as as one of the select uh, select fintechs in in those programs. Um, and 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 we want to build on it. Twenty twenty three for us is going to be an exciting year. Uh, we want to invite uh, kind of uh, you know more people to work with us, to invest in us, to be our clients, to be our partners. Um, and we really want to kind of use the springboard that we laid in twenty twenty two in building a great product with a very rich feature set to take it to market in a in a um, in an exciting way, um, and to power the next generation of wealth value propositions to come to market. That remains our our core vision, uh, core mission, um, and and we hope that you know stars align amongst our hard work to make that happen. Yeah, and just to just to maybe uh, leave a thought out to everybody, twenty twenty three looks like it's going to be tough here um, globally. <clears throat> and um, and I think um, just props to everybody trying to build the businesses uh, uh, coming across, you know, coming up against, you know, investors who are backing out or, or clients who are, who, who are struggling to uh, agree to contracts and stuff like that. Um, stick in there. All right. Um, we have a support system. Andre and I um, constantly are our support systems. Um, when you know, when things are difficult, um, and um, just have at it, and have at it, um, some of the best things come out, um, and we truly believe this. Some of the best things come out in in the darkest of times. That was a wonderful thought to leave our audience with that, and I and I like the feel good feeling that I'm leaving as well with. Firstly, thank you so much uh, for joining us today. And Anton, like you said, I hope stars do align for you guys. And Shama, like you said, global dominance will, will be there for you. I'm, I'm pretty sure, if not this year or next year. Thank you so much for speaking with us today. Thank you, Rashi, for having us. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Great, great chatting to you. Thank you very much, Rashi. Thank you. Absolute pleasure. Thank you, guys, and more power to you and to the team at Wealth OS. And thank you once again for to our audience for tuning into Coffee with Innovate Finance. Do look out for upcoming episodes and follow us on Twitter and LinkedIn for more on our events and programs. And as always, until next time, take very good care of yourselves. <laughs>